when, when, I was, when I was a young lad growing up on the island, we didn't have cars, we didn't have electricity. There were no, no big ferries in those days, you were depending on sail and um, the smaller boats to bring commodities from the mainland. Well, the weather would be bad. They'd have to wait until the weather improved for to get the stuff in. But most of the, uh, most of the people living, living on Clare Island were self-sufficient. Life is, 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 is progressing too fast, you know. I remember coming down to Runa a few years ago and uh, I, just, I just saw crates of, of milk, crates of vegetables, stuff like that coming into the island. And it surprised me and saddened me to think that when I remember all the lovely fields of, of uh, vegetable fields that were in the island, everybody had their own, own vegetables and uh, to see it being imported. There was a great community spirit here then. Every household had a, had a pig because they shared, they shared the, the, the meat as, as, when they killed the, the pig, passed it on to the neighbours and when they killed it, they did, the, did likewise. And uh, all, they kept fresh meat, in other words, through part of the winter. We didn't have that much to uh, occupy our time, really, you know, as, as children. Uh, <clears throat> we had no televisions. No, we had radio, but uh, most we made our own, our own fun and uh, our own pastimes. We certainly didn't have the pastimes and luxuries that today's children have, you know. Which was good. It was good. I, I have lovely memories of it. This is where I first learned my first lessons. That's where we play the handball and the toilets were out there. And the ball just go over the wall and we'd have to hop over the wall to get it. And there was always a stream there, I don't know if it's still there. The girls then used to, used to play at the, at the far side of the, of, the, of the school and down at the back. My father being connected with the lighthouse, and his father before him, it went back three, three generations before. And then I suppose it was natural for me to be, I liked, I became very acquainted with the lighthouse keepers and we were great friends. And uh, that's how I think I adapted to, to the life. I was young, I suppose, and full of, you know, full of the vigor of youth at that time. And uh, the lighthouse service was a very well respected um, service at that time. Jack, 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 Jack,
know you with the hat. I wouldn't say it was adventure, uh, it was interesting, but um, there was a lot of isolation there. You were in, of course, lighthouses had to be built in isolated spots, you know, and on cliff tops and all that. It, some would say it was a lonely life, but uh, every lighthouse keeper, I, I've, I don't know of any lighthouse keeper that complained too much about, of, of loneliness. I read and I, I had to did a bit of woodwork, and, but um, I was lucky because I, I got some, some very nice stations. I got uh, stations that you could, where you could be, you had a social life, you know, island stations. And uh, although I did have severe rock stations and I was isolated for many, many weeks on some of them. Yorkshire, called Yorkshire flags, and they are broken, of course, they're not broken now, but they all had to be transported into the island, you know. Well, I always wanted to come back here, and uh, I thought actually that um, it had passed me by, but uh, automation had just come in at the time, and uh, Clare Island was one of the first stations that was being automated. There's de uh, demand, actually, the keepers are taken off. So I, this was in the offing, and I said, oh, I, well, I'll never get back to my, my home island as, as, as a lighthouse keeper. But I did. They, 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 they very kindly stationed me back here for the, the two last years that, that the, the lighthouse functioned, existed. So they gave me the privilege, if it was a privilege, which I, I don't think it was, it was a sad time, of closing down the lighthouse. There was a lot of sadness in the island. I had a, a temporary keeper here at the time, and uh, the two of us, I'll always remember the two of us up on, that, up on that balcony there, and looking down on the gardens here. And uh, I said to myself, yeah, how sad it is. It was, a, it was a lovely station, actually, lovely station. I have great memories of it. That's the lighthouse that was built to replace this one, right across the channel. Well, the lighthouse keepers are gone. That's good. They're gone completely. But uh, I still think with all the uh, sat-navs and uh, electricity and all that, you know, they're because they were electrified, uh, even though there are backups there, I think that, that you can't replace the hand of the man, you know. Well, this is a very nostalgic visit, even this evening, you know, because I see this place has changed as well. The old buildings are still here, and I love to, to look around and see, see where, where we used to put everything, where the keepers lived, and their house, the house is here, and uh, delighted, but I am delighted, absolutely delighted, to see the way that, that the, the station has been restored, because for many years it had deteriorated. It's, it's, it's a wonderful achievement.